In this video, I'm going to bring you 100 facts on kratom, covering everything from traditional use to its chemistry, its health benefits, side effects, legal status, and the future of this plant medicine that could be used to help to treat the opioid epidemic around the world, in the US and even in Ireland. And the sources for this, these facts will be in, linked in the description box below. Many of them are backed by scientific evidence and others by historical, social and cultural evidence. I'm Tom Bryan, the mental health herbalist, and if this is your first time here, I'd love if you subscribed to keep up to date with the latest information on herbs and foods as medicine. Okay, let's get started. So, Kratom is the common name for Mitrogena speciosa. It was given its botanical name, Mitrogena speciosa, by Peter Cortels, a botanist who worked for the East India Company in 1839. So it's around for a long time. Kratom comes from the same plant family as coffee, very common, Rubasia, and coffee uh, like Kratom is also a stimulant. Its leaves act like a mini pharmacy as they are full of plant chemicals, pharmaceuticals that are beneficial to your health. Kratom is indigenous in Asia and places like Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea. So it's an evergreen tree that can grow as high as 25 meters or 80 feet tall. The leaves are dark green and glossy and oval in shape with 12 to 17 pairs of veins. And these veins are important to distinguish the different types. There are three strains of kratom, white, red, and green vein kratom. And they differ in their pharmacological effects. Red vein, for example, is solely a product of Thailand. And according to internet forums, red vein is known to be more sedative, whereas green and white uh, kratom are more stimulating. It was traditionally used uh, in Asia by male manual workers who worked really hard and helped them to cope with the endurance, the physical endurance, and to overcome the stress of their hard work. Historically, it was also used as a treatment for malaria, cough, hypertension, diarrhea, depression, pain, and fever. There's also an early record of Kratom being used in Thailand and Malaysia as an affordable opiate substitution, as opiate addiction has been a historical problem in Asia. And as a herbal medicine, Kratom has the following actions. It's an analgesic, which is for pain, antipyretic, which is for fever, it's antitussive, which is for preventing cough and clearing the lungs. It's anti-diarrheal, which you know what that is. It's euphoric, gives you that boost. It's an antidepressant, lifts you. And it's an anosilitic, which uh, reduces anxiety. Now, kratom can be consumed in many ways. For example, it can be smoked, or you can chew the leaves. It's quite common in Asia. It can also be made into an infusion with the leaves. And the leaves can be powdered and taken in a tablet or capsule form. It can also be made into an extract, which is a liquid dose, and additives such as honey and sugar can be often added to kratom to reduce its bitter taste. It's quite bitter. Kratom, remember now, kratom is not a drug. It's often referred to a drug. It's not an opiate. It acts like an opiate, and it's not a synthetic substance like these legal highs. It's a naturally occurring plant medicine. It's nature's medicine showing us how nature can heal and provide health benefits. Now the key psychoactive components in Kratom are mitragynine and 7-hydroxymitragynine, hard to pronounce. But there are more than 40 other uh, chemical compounds found in the leaves of Kratom. The mitragynine contents in Kratom vary with location and season. When Kratom is grown in Southeast Asia, the amounts of mitragynine can be higher, but elsewhere it can be lower and even non-existent, depending what part of the world it's grown in. The pharmacology of kratom is still being developed, and so what we know today is subject to research and debate. And in fact, in Ireland, we know very little about kratom. That's what I found in this research for this video. Kratom has been described as exerting both stimulant at low doses and sedative effects at high doses. Now, the whole leaves of kratom 
uh, are stimulating. While the metragenine is a depressant and it, this suggests that the, that the pharmacological importance of the other alkaloids in in uh, creatine, not just the metragenine, there are many other balancing effects. The effects of the main alkaloids, metragenine and the 7 hydroxamide tetragenine um, have been mainly explained by their interactions with the opioid serotonin and dopamine receptors. Really important receptors in the brain to do with stress and well-being and feeling well. Now the 7 hydroxamide tetragenine um, found in creatine has shown to be 13 times stronger than morphine in animal studies. But remember, that, that alkaloid is a very small percentage of, of the actual whole leaf. Now, Kratom is recognized as a remedy for opiate withdrawal. The predominant alkaloid in, of Kratom, metragenine, binds with the Mu and Kappa opioid receptors and has additional affinities with other receptors that will help to explain why it, it takes the edge off opiate withdrawals. Now, at least two studies have demonstrated the antidepressant effect of mitragenine. So, this indicates that this could be a potential natural treatment for depression, which is a huge issue around the world. So this plant is really, really important and needs to be studied more. Now, Kratom has, has traditionally been used also to improve libido and sexual performance because it's a stimulant effect, increases energy and well-being. Now, research suggests that that creatine reduces, also reduces uh, food and water intake. So it suppresses body weight gain and resulting in weight loss. So it's one of the benefits for people. Uh, obesity is a big problem. Now, according to a German study, creatine has also been used to help uh, self-manage alcohol withdrawal symptoms. So that's a really important benefit in Ireland, especially we have a huge alcohol problem and creatine could help there. The users of a website called irwid.org report experiences of euphoria a sense of well-being, relaxation, enhanced sociability, increased energy and sensory enhancement. They are really exciting benefits and uh, ones I'd be interested in myself. Now, Kratom is used to, in, in, in Thailand uh, and Malaysia as a traditional medicine for aches and pains, coughs, uh, diabetes and hypertension. So lots of potential that really need to be further researched. Now, Kratom as a stimulant increases energy concentration and motivation. I mean, who, who doesn't want more energy and motivation? Um, I'll say yes to that. Now, according to a study, another study, Kratom has anti-inflammatory effects, and we know a lot of diseases uh, are a result of inflammation. Now, you know, remember, you should never uh, drive, operate heavy machinery, power tools, climb ladders while under the influence of Kratom. These are common sense things, but just remember, you know, the, it's a sedative, so uh, be careful. Kratom products are sold in a wide variety of forms, and as a result, Kratom products can vary in the concentration of mitragenine. So that's really important to understand the, the source of the product, the percentage of the mitragenine in, in Kratom. According to a research paper, Kratom should be used cautiously with uh, patients who have disorders of the thyroid and liver. So that's really important to be to be careful. Kratom has gained recent popularity in young popularity in young people as in if, for the euphoric effects, as a legal height, as an alternative to other sedative and stimulant uh, drugs. So that, that can be a beneficial thing because Kratom is a plant medicine. Combinations of Kratom with other substances are sold on the internet, promising a more powerful high and you should always exercise caution when you're purchasing your Kratom. So Kratom should be avoided during pregnancy and lactation with children because pregnancy is really, uh, you know, it's, a, it's something you need to be careful about and uh, Kratom is not to be used. Now, Kratom is attracting attention among sports professionals who want to enhance their performance. I mean, that's what everybody wants. However, uh, drugs and sports is a big issue. And in 2015, for the first time, mitragenine was detected in um, doping samples originating from uh, uh, sports, um, strength sports. So uh, it's coming into the whole uh, uh, sports area. Uh, so you need to be careful. So Kratom also interacts with the following. So it interacts with alcohol, painkillers, benzodiazepines, caffeine, cocaine, diuretics, gastrointestinal agents, antidepressants, neurological agents, opiates, sedatives, stimulants, and thyroid agents. So it interacts with a lot of drugs and you need to be careful. And remember, always talk to your prescribing doctor about your medication, about your health, about your well-being before making any changes. 
and let them know if you're using Kratom. Doctors need to be educated on this as well. Although Kratom uses increasing the scientific research on the adverse effects and the toxicity is still limited. So you need to be careful about what you read and hear in the news. 2015 literature review in the International Journal of Medicine found that Kratom is considered minimally toxic. So it's really a safe plant. The pharmacological effects of Kratom leaves and their constituents are dose dependent. So the more you use, the stronger the effects. So you need to be careful and use it in moderation. In the last five years, there were nine fatal cases of intoxication associated with the use of Kratom-based product known as Krypton. Now, Krypton is a mixture of mitragynine and odesimethramidol, a painkiller. So uh, it's important to be careful. And however, these mortalities um, have been ascribed to the, to, to the use of the, the drug odesimethramidol, tramadol, not the Kratom itself. So that's where a lot of the fatalities come when Kratom is used in combination with other drugs. Only one study in Thailand documented cases of Kratom poisoning and adverse withdrawal uh, symptoms associated with, with Kratom users. However, most of the respondents reported Kratom poisoning were found to be the under influence of other uh, drugs at the same time. So that's really a big issue where Kratom is getting a bad name because people are using combination with other drugs. Now there have been uh, also reports of people um, making up their own concoctions of Kratom with codeine and cough syrup and that's not something you really want to be doing. Kratom should be used on its own and hopefully without other substances as well. Now deaths attributed to Kratom have not always been supported by evidence. As I said, it's a real big issue with Kratom being used in conjunction, you know, it's polydrug use is what we refer to. Now the side effects of Kratom in the Western context have been deduced from case reports, one-to-one -one kind of case studies. Now, there's been no large face-to-face -face surveys of users have been conducted, so it's limited. It limits what we know about the side effects. Some individuals may experience anxiety if a high dose of kratom are consumed. So you need to understand kratom, how much to use, when to use it, and how not to use it with other conditions and other drugs. One of the side effects is hyperpigmentation of the cheeks, tremors, uh, anorexia, weight loss, as I mentioned earlier, have been found in individuals uh, who use kratom in the longer term. Some of the negative effects reported on that website, uh, eruid.org, uh, I'll put the link in the box below, include nausea, uh, stomach aches, alternating between chills and sweats, dizziness, vomiting, itchiness, numbing in the mouth and throat, and sedation. However, users are also prone to develop tolerance and will increase their use over time. It's kind of common, you know, we, we like something, we take more of it. So you need to be careful and maintain, a, you know, a, a very reasonable dose. There have been two cases of Kratom uh, use linked to, to seizures, but these have not been confirmed in later toxicology reports. There's been one case of hypothyroidism found in somebody who is using Kratom in the long term. And what researchers think is that there's likely to be an interaction between the mitragynine and the thyroid gland, which is a lot to do with stress, the fight or flight response. Now, damage to the liver has also been uh, reported, uh, suggested in relation to ingestion of Kratom. And there was another case of a man aged 58 suffering from cholestatic hepatitis linked to prolonged use of Kratom. Researchers speculate that the pharmacological effects of pure uh, mitragynine consumed in the West in a powder form and the unprocessed leaf used in, in the East in Asia uh, may explain the different sociocultural experiences of Kratom uh, since the unprocessed leaf, the pure leaf, make a, a, does contain all these other alkaloids that probably modify the effect. So if you're, re if you're taking pure mitragynine, you're getting a really a hyper strong dose. So you need to be careful and prefer to use the plant as a whole. Now the limited information on the risks and benefits of Kratom in humans contrasts sometimes to what's the sensationist and often inaccurate reporting in the popular media regarding the dangers of Kratom. And it's a pity because Kratom has been demonized. Now at the moment, there are no standard criteria to assess addiction to Kratom. So it's difficult to say when somebody is addicted. So how can you say Kratom is addictive if you don't have a criteria? Yet still many believe that Kratom has addictive potential. Now, addiction needs to be understood. There's a lot of harms associated with being in the addict addictive spectrum. Although Kratom can have similar actions to the opiate pain medications, it does not appear to be nearly as addictive. So it's a great plant in that sense 
release it eases pain but not as addictive as some of those medications. Research has shown that Kratom is, is sought by heroin users when they're unable to obtain heroin. Kratom is still viewed as an addictive psychotropic plant since it reflects and resembles other psychotropic substances. But addiction is not just liking a substance, it's the damage that's done by the substance. And while Kratom is not habit forming when used responsibly or recreationally, Kratom has appeal among a wide range of drug users because it produces that stimulant and opiate like effects and we, we like those effects and can be used as a legal means uh, to treat opiate withdrawal which is a big problem and one of the reasons why Kratom has become so popular. Kratom like many substances like coffee and alcohol and tobacco, some of the biggest addicted substances on the planet, when used daily for a long period of time um, are bound to become habits that are hard to break. We know that. So just adding Kratom to that list is just saying the obvious. And of course people who are using Kratom to overcome pre-existing opiate um, addictions may need to use Kratom on a daily basis to avoid the withdrawal symptoms. People suffering from chronic pain may need to take Kratom on a daily basis instead of pharmaceutical painkillers which have serious side effects and are way, way more addictive and harmful. Now, while Kratom uh, use may lead to dependency and Kratom withdrawal symptoms appear to be uh, moderate and uh, not as, as severe and intense as the withdrawals from opiates or painkillers. A number of individuals have reported successfully uh, using Kratom to substitute for, for opiates benzodiazepines and antidepressants. So this is a good thing. If a natural plant can help people come off medications, that's a good thing. Now withdrawal symptoms were reported to include um, aching muscles and bones, anorexia, weight loss and psychosis. So you're bound to feel something when you let go a nice substance like you know, chocolate's my one. Psychological and sim symptoms of withdrawal include sadness, nervousness, delusion, hallucinations, anxiety and depression. So again, you know, when we use something to ease our, our emotional pain, you know, when we take it away, we're gonna feel that stuff again. Now, recent evidence has suggested that Kratom can be used regularly, but with only sm uh, small impairments of social functioning in contrast to opiates. So, you know, it, isn't, it doesn't have that deep grip on us as opiates can. Some of the long-term users um, do report uh, difficulties giving up uh, regular kratom use. So it's a plant medicine and ideally shouldn't be used long term. Other reports that uh, kratom withdrawal symptoms can be annoying and distracting, yet they're not as painful as the opiate withdrawals, as I've said earlier. A survey of users in Malaysia found that those who consumed up to three glasses of kratom juice per day had higher odds of developing uh, kratom dependence. Now, there's also know that withdrawal symptoms usually disappear after two to three days, so that's not really too bad. Now, so despite some cases of creating dependence, many users remain in good health and uh, function normally. This is unlike, you know, drugs like uh, methadone and heroin that are, you know, really, really strong addictive uh, opiates. And a Malaysian study found no significant impairments in social functioning of kratom users and were less likely to engage in risky drug use, drug using or criminal behaviour. So kratom should not be really associated with, you know, that level schedule one drug. Now insomnia and restlessness are the most common symptoms after ceasing to use kratom. So, you know, that's something that can be addressed using other herbs, for example, passion flower lamba. There's also a case of a man with uh, alcohol dependence in the UK who complained of anxiety, restlessness, tremor and sweating and cravings. Um, however, these symptoms were uh, seen to be short and benign. So, you know, again, there are withdrawal symptoms, but they tend to be short. Kratom is currently controlled and banned under the Poisons Act 1953 in Malaysia. And those found guilty of distributing uh, kratom leaves, preparing it illegally, can be fined and sentenced to jail for up to four years. So it's quite serious now in Malaysia. However, the cultivation of kratom in Malaysia is not an offence. And despite the, the legal sanctions, possession of kratom juice can be acquired quite easily uh, from illegal kratom traders in the community. So there's kind of a blind I've been turned to this traditional medicine, which is probably a reasonable thing to do. In Thailand, kratom was first regulated under the Kratom Act 1943, 
but has been reclassified in 1979 under the Narcotics Act. So again, associating as a narcotic, the plant uh, possession, importation, exportation of, of kratom leaves is now considered illegal. And this is quite serious. Your kratom is legal in the US. Some states have and are currently taking regulatory and legislative action to ban this wonderful plant. However, the American Kratom Association are campaigning vigorously to prevent kratom from being banned across a number of states and are having success. And I recommend you really support the American Kratom Association. Although the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA in the states, has released an important alert cautioning to the side effects of kratom in, kratom in use in humans. The US Drug Enforcement Administration, the DEA, has placed kratom on a list of drugs of drugs and chemicals of concern. Kratom is uh, currently controlled in several EU states, countries, such as Denmark, Finland, Lithuania, Poland, Romania and Sweden. Kratom is also banned in Australia. Now in Ireland, Kratom is not very well known, yet recently it was listed as a Schedule 1 drug, giving it the same status as heroin. This is unbelievable. Kratom's most important alkalides, 7 hydroxymitotragenine and mitragenine, are now listed as Schedule 1 drugs under the Misuse of Drugs Regulation 2017 and therefore are subject to the strictest controls. Substances covered under this provision of Schedule 1 drugs, you know, this act, cannot be imported, exported, possessed, supplied without a proper license. So I can't touch the stuff, can't import it, buy it, or use it, or prescribe it. Now, unfortunately, most of the Irish politicians who voted for this new law probably have never heard of Kratom, and that's from my recent research. Or it's alkalides, the mitragenine, or the 7 hydroxymitragenine, which is hard to pronounce. But it's based on scaremongering from scientists from the biomedical model, um, and thus lobbying, and politicians don't read the evidence. They will after this video. Uh, there is a risk also that this anti uh, drug rhetoric fueled by ignorance will damage the reputation of Kratom, leading to more countries making it illegal. So hence I want to really try and show you and present to you some of the facts. Users in Northern Malaysia see Kratom as a way to avoid approaching government drug addiction facilities that might expose their identities. So it's, it's been used socially for a number of reasons. But Kratom enables self-treatment that avoids the stigmatization of associated with other drugs. And this is a good thing because stigma is a bad thing. It presses problems under society and they just get worse. There's also reports of a recent drug trend among young people in Thailand who boil kratom leaves um, as a base and for a cocktail named 4x100. And it's made up of kratom tea, cough syrup, Coca-Cola and ice cubes. So our risks when you know these subcultures start developing. However, fears of censure from the community and law enforcement agencies have pushed uh, the use of these con co concoctions into hidden settings, which only increases the risks associated with creative. This is known when we push drugs out and we use these uh, extreme prohibitive uh, procedures, uh, things can only get worse. Kratom is a cheap and easy to access, making it an effective way to take the edge off opiate symptoms. So it's a natural way for people to treat themselves and, um, and to prevent themselves getting addicted to opiates. Both in East and South Asia and in the West, gradually we've moved away from the traditional uses and it's becoming more of a recreational drug, obviously with medicinal benefits for stress, anxiety, depression and, and uh, addiction. In Southeast Asia, uh, while users faced rebuke from family members for engaging what they call a wasteful kratom habit, um, th but they're neither discriminated against nor stigmatized or stereotyped as drug users. So, you know, there's kind of an understanding and an acceptance of its use. Now, the majority of regular uh, kratom users uh, are older individuals um, with regular employment and married and living with families. The recent findings also suggest that kratom can be purchased from internet sources by some of the many millions or some 40 million Americans uh, with chronic pain who, who use tablets and, and they are now trying to source Kratom on the internet. Kratom holds potential as a development for opiate addiction and this is something that we need to embrace rather than suppress. This is what drives me nuts about the suppression of Kratom. The DEA argue that Kratom is dangerous because there were 600 calls 
related to creating exposure, creating problems from 2010 to 15. That's 100 per year. It's nothing in comparison to exposures from pain medications that now account for something like 300,000 calls in 2014 alone. And cosmetics, calls from cosmetics, person products, cleaning solutions, antidepressants, antihistamines, account for more than 100,000 calls per year. So it's crazy. The demonization, the stigmatization, and the suppression of creatine is crazy. This is a plant medicine, and we have to embrace plant medicines. That's what this channel is all about. That's why I made this video, is to show you that many of the medications that have been produced by pharmaceuticals today are not solving problems, and they're causing autogenic problems, which is when a drug causes more problems than it's supposed to solve. Here's a plant medicine that could help solve many of the opiate problems and the pain addiction problems, which is at epidemic levels. And people are dying in their tens and hundreds of thousands, yet very few people have had severe effects from Kratom. Kratom, there are risks associated because it's a plant medicine that's a sedative and a stimulant but it's a nature's medicine. So I hope you got to the end of this video, 100 facts on Kratom, and I hope you found this video useful and share it with your friends and family and others who may benefit from this information. Most important thing is that people are informed, that they get the facts. Now you can dispute some of these facts. As I said, many of them are evidence-based. The links are in the description below or on my website. I'll bring you to, to my website where you'll have the 100 uh, facts with links and sources. I try to make the best possible video for you, the best possible video to increase awareness in Kratom, especially in Ireland, where it's not that well known. Thanks for watching this video. Look forward to seeing you in a video very soon. Take care. Bye bye.